Imagine having more than $200 million, but they're stored on a USB drive and you've lost the password. It's not like your email where you can change it every third day due to your goldfish memory. No, if you enter the wrong password more than 10 times, everything will be lost forever. Yikes. Well, that's what happened to Stefan Thomas in 2011, a Swiss programmer and pioneer of something called Bitcoin. Talk about a costly case of password amnesia. You might be wondering what this Bitcoin thing is and how it's possible to store it on a USB drive without keeping it in a bank like normal people's money. Well, buckle up because we're about to dive into the wild world of digital currency. First, we need to understand how money works. We have to travel back in time to 2000 years BCE. Back then, people used to exchange things for products or services, which is called bartering. If you wanted a good spear, you could trade it for a puppy. But what if the other person wasn't a dog lover and wanted a cat instead? Well, that was a problem. So, people started using more useful things to exchange, like farm birds, stones, and precious metals. Eventually, gold and silver became the most popular trading stuff because everyone loves gold, right? When large transactions were made, carrying kilos upon kilos of gold wasn't practical. So they came up with the idea of writing the debt on paper. And that's how paper money emerged. And thus, bills were born. Years passed, technology has evolved, and now the paper money has become invisible. No, I'm not saying that bills are now magical. Instead, we've replaced bills with cards, with chips, or even with our cell phones. Our money now occupies a space in a database, and every time you order a coffee, that amount is subtracted from the databases that the bank has in its systems. But sometimes communication fails, or the bank doesn't receive the call, or occasionally, there might be a third party intercepting the data. Damn those pesky hackers! This is where cryptocurrencies come in, and things get complicated. So, we'll explain using ducks. Imagine a pond where all the ducks keep ledgers, also called blockchains, to track the ownership of breadcrumbs, or their currency, which we will call duck coins. These ledgers are essentially records of every transaction that has ever taken place in the pond. Whenever a duck wants to transfer some breadcrumbs to another duck, it broadcasts this transfer request to all the ducks in the pond. The ducks then compete among themselves to validate this transaction and record it in their respective ledgers. This validation process is called mining, and it involves solving a complex mathematical puzzle, equivalent to one trillion operations. The first duck to solve the puzzle gets to add a new block of validated transactions to their ledger and is rewarded with newly created duck coins. This incentivizes ducks to participate in the mining process and keep the system running. Bob wants to mine the next duck coin, so he has to generate enough energy to do the calculations. He spends his time swimming around the pond, flapping his wings. The faster he does it, the sooner he'll be able to get the next coin. All the ledgers are constantly being updated and synchronized with each other. So every duck has a consistent view of who owns what breadcrumbs. This decentralized and transparent nature of the system makes it very secure and prevents any single duck from manipulating the records. This strong security is what makes many people invest their money in duck currencies. I mean, cryptocurrencies. According to statistics, more than twice as many men as women invest in them. This means that men trust technology more than people, unlike women. Men! Remember Skynet, Terminator, and all that? Jeez! There are many types of cryptocurrencies out there, all using a similar scheme. Bitcoin is the most popular, followed by Ethereum and many others. New ones are emerging every day. It's a digital currency race, and they're going to keep popping up. Thanks to its popularity, one Bitcoin cost $62,000. No, wait, now it costs $2. Now $100,000. The figure can change every minute. Anyone can buy bitcoins and invest in them. According to money experts, the average bitcoiner is a European or American man between 25 and 34 years old. He also has a stable job and is prone to buying legal things online. Does that description sound familiar? Maybe you're the next cryptocurrency tycoon. Cheers. What's worth more than gold to us is your thumbs up. So help us out with your likes and subscribe.
it doesn't cost you a thing. It's like giving us a virtual tip. And although mining bitcoins sounded very attractive for a while, the coin itself is designed to reach a limit, 21 million bitcoins. This is to avoid overexploitation, as has happened with other types of currencies in history. That's why every four years, something called halving occurs, which means that what miners are paid is reduced by half. I feel bad for Bob. It's designed in such a way that when the 21 millionth bitcoin is reached, no more will be produced. But what are those big companies that used to mine bitcoins going to do? Well, don't worry. They're using their power to create clones of ChatGPT. AI is the new frontier. But that is a theme for another video. Well, you might be thinking that the whole cryptocurrency thing sounds very tempting. The ducks thought so too, which is why they decided to create their own currency. First, they need to find a super smart duck that knows how to program to create or modify their blockchain. Easy peasy, right? Something like building a nest, but with a lot more engineering involved. Then, they need to bring some expensive supercomputers to the pond with enough power to verify and process transactions. The hard part was dragging it to the lake. Next, they'll have to invest in their coin, and they must have a strong investment that gives it notoriety in the world of cryptocurrency, as there are currently more than 23,000 existing, with a combined investment of more than $1 trillion. That's a trillion, with a capital T. So they need a heavy investment to stand out. Scrooge McDuck to the rescue. The last step is to wait for the consumers to arrive with the help of a good promotional campaign. I've already seen the future of the duck coin. It's bright. That's why all ducks wear sunglasses. These ducks are in luck. Companies from various countries are exploring the option of paying to their employees in cryptocurrencies, as this would save them the hefty commission they pay to banks. The future of transactions seems to be leading us to a world without centralized banks. Obviously, your debts won't disappear. They'll just be in millions of computers around the world, and no one will be able to hack your account. There's still time to see how banks will adapt to the new financial world. Several of them already offer features for cryptocurrency users, such as accounts for businesses or easy conversion between cryptos and regular currency. It's like banks are trying to join the digital currency party. Better late than never. In a few years, no one will pay cash anymore, cards and cryptocurrencies will be used, and everything will be 100% digital. So it's time for you to take out the coins your grandfather gave you and the ones you have accumulated in the hole in the couch and exchange them for bitcoins before they become museum pieces.